Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode 59 of Be With Me. Today's title is that Jesus goes postal. And we're going to ask the question today, what does he go postal about and why? Jesus has a physical response to some sort of a violation. And we got to figure out what it is. Here we go. This is from John chapter 2, verses 13 and following the passover of the jews was at hand and jesus went up to jerusalem in the temple he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons and the money changers sitting were sitting there and making a whip of cords he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold pigeons, take these things away, do not make my father's house a house of trade. Verse 17, his disciples remembered that it was written, this is from Psalm 69, verse nine, zeal for your house will consume me. All right, so Jesus goes postal here, he makes a whip, he says things, he overturns tables, coins are on the ground, animals are run, running all over. He's smacking things with the whip. He has a physical response to some sort of a violation against the temple. Now, these people, in a sense, were providing a service. People traveled to Jerusalem. This is the first r- recorded um, holiday, high holiday that Jesus was celebrating. This is his first Passover in his public ministry, uh, his 30th Passover or whatever of his uh, lifetime. Now, the amazing thing is, is that Jesus lets lots of evil slide in his life. He lets the, the oppression of the Roman Empire and unjust taxation maybe and uh, Herod the Great who kills a bunch of babies. He lets that slide Uh, Herod's sons lets that slide, personal things, sexual sins of people that are around him, evil people that are around him. Um, Even within his group, you've got knuckleheads are us, Peter and the normal disciples. And then you've got the super betraying Judas. He lets all that go, but this he does not let go. He cannot let go. He's got a a death grip on this on the temple he couldn't leave this alone this zeal got him okay so why what's the big deal about the 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 temple now these people uh provided a service people needed money changing they needed oxen they needed sheep they needed pigeons but not in the the father's house that interfered with the outer court of the temple where the non-jews the gentiles would come the righteous gentiles would come and worship so in a sense it was interfering with the worship of the one true god so that makes sense so let's talk about jesus going postal when is it this is the the first time he goes postal he actually does it again in mark 11 there's another clearing of the temple same topic same everything in that time he says my house shall be called my house here he calls it his father's house uh, zeal for your house my father's house a uh, uh, house of trade in mark 11 he calls it my house this is the house of god so where is this this is the temple so this is the most important people group in the world it's the most important country in the world jerusalem is the most important city in the world the temple mount is the most important one block square and then this is the most important building in on the planet in the entire world entire universe why is that because god lives there and god was geographically located in the temple until the holy spirit comes eventually so so why what gets them all what gets jesus all excited is he found them in there violating this temple this is my father's house this is his 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 presence his person you have no respect for him um it's a house for god and if you want to read about that go back to second samuel chapter 7 fantastic chapter about david building a house for god and it says there 
uh, that David's not going to be able to build the temple, but Solomon gets to build a house for my name, for my reputation. So even Jesus recognizes that this is a special place uh, of his presence and communion and communication. And uh, this zeal just gets a hold of him. Now, eventually, God is going to decentralize his presence. Like today, for example, he's going to indwell people. So in John chapter 14, he says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or knows him. You know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. And then later, verse 23, Jesus answered, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. In other words, the house for God changes in John chapter 14, but in John chapter 3, it's the temple. So here's the question. Would Jesus go postal today? Now, historically, if you go to the temple, it's a historically important area. Jerusalem is an important city, and the Temple Mount is an important place. Uh, But would Jesus go postal today? No. Why is that? Because I believe that the house of God has changed. So Jesus would still have the same passion. He would have the passion for the place of God, for the home of God, for the house of God. But the question is, where is that now? Well, John 14 tells us it's left, he's left the building, if you will, and now he indwells believers. So here's the thing, is God still has the same zeal and same object of the zeal, that is the house of God, but the location of it has changed. The location now is inside believers. So this zeal where Jesus just goes postal, he has the same zeal for us now. He's going postal for us. That's what he did on the cross is he just went crazy for us because we now have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us. We are the location of God. So now if Jesus would come back now, he would just be going postal, not for the temple with all due respect. He would go postal for the people that are the temple, that are the house of God now. Thanks for listening.